Welcome to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts, the leading newsroom for telecom and data center professionals. I'm Jean-Max Lima, and joining me today, I've got Lee Curry, co-founder and chairman of Salute Mission Critical. Lee, thank you so much for talking to us. How, how are you doing? Doing great. Thanks for having me on. Great to have you always on. Um, but um, let's talk about you and Salute Mission Critical. Um, talk us through like your, your life story, like how did you get to launch the, the organization and what does the company do? You bet. Uh, so I'm the chairman and co-founder. I had the good fortune of partnering up with Jason Okroy, who's the CEO. And we started this in 2013. At the time, veterans unemployment rate was crazy. It was almost 25% for first term veterans that had gotten off and they were considered unskilled. So we wanted to build a company that would show that there's no such thing as an unskilled veteran. And we've done that four to eight years later, we've got 400 full-time staff in 10 countries and continuing to grow rapidly because we built a service model that leverages the strengths of what veterans learn in the military and brings that to market. And it's a valuable uh, offering that people are latching onto and kind of embracing as the new way of doing business at the data center sites. I mean, I was quite impressed with the, the growth um, of Salute, to be honest. Um, especially after nearly five years, it's still growing very fast, which is, I mean, usually startups start slowing down their growth at this point, but you guys seem to be still going quite strong. We are, and the exciting thing about it is I think we've got even more growth ahead of us. We've found a capital partner that believes in our mission that came in, and you saw the announcement just a couple of days ago with LLR Partners. Yeah. And uh, that's just going to give us the ability to really scale this thing. We'll invest into our infrastructure and our systems and our people and uh, really put the pedal to the metal, as they say. Um, I mean, this is big stuff. Because there are big equity capital investors. Um, they've raised more than $5 billion um, across six funds over the years. Um, I mean, talk us a little bit more in detail through the, through the news they just released this week. We knew a few years ago that as we got to a certain point, we would outscale Jason and my personal assets because like typical entrepreneurs who bootstrap a company, we were doing this uh, basically by collateralizing our assets to get the line of credits and be able to make payroll and do that. Now we've got a partner that understands how to finance, how to do, get the capital line so that we can push for even further growth. But if we wanted to keep it just to ourselves, we could have just stayed at the level we are, keep the 400 people going, but we would like to look back in a few years and be talking about thousands of employees all across the world that are getting a chance to get into the data center industry and delivering quality services. Okay. When, when we talk about expanding across the world, and you've already said that you're present in 10 countries, um, what's the plan outside of the U.S. anyway, even for the other nine countries, if they're outside of the U.S.? You bet um, we've got you. Great uh, operations already established in Europe uh, are three footholds that I consider are Ireland, Netherlands, and the Nordic region, but we'll take those operations and we'll expand them further into other accounts. Uh, and then we'll also be breaking into new markets based on activity in Poland and Spain, and we'll see more growth in Germany and France. So it's pretty exciting all across the board in the Europe and the growth that's going there. As the data centers move out, we move out to help run them on a daily basis. In South America, we're already in Chile and Argentina. I think by the end of the year, we'll probably be in Mexico and expand further in Chile. And we'll continue to expand in the US too. We've got a lot of growth forecasted for the hottest market, Northern Virginia, but we're also seeing a lot of growth in Canada and Montreal and um, I, all across the board. Our new region will be Asia, but we don't have that yet in the forecast, but we do have that long-term that we know we'll have to be there. Yeah, well, you can't escape Asia. Um, yeah. And eventually at some point this decade, Africa as well. But I mean, a lot of the destinations that you touched upon, like they are really um, booming in terms of demand, and they will be over the next two, three years, Poland, Spain, Italy. Um, so that is very interesting. But there was also a few things that you said in the release that I was quite interested or quite curious about. Um, so one of them, you said that you represent, um, and I quote, like an often misunderstood and overlooked resource pool, um, which would be the veterans. I mean, let's talk about this resource pool. Like how big is this resource pool? How qualified are they? Um, what do they have to bring to the markets? Um, especially in Europe, for example where the, the notion of veterans is probably not as big as in the US. 
And we do have a large military in the US, but there's also significant militaries in the other countries. And we're working with a group called Euromil that represents 23 countries and tapping into the veterans there. The one thing that you find consistent in all the programs is veterans go through similar training, learning the teamwork, learning critical thinking, learning how to operate under pressure. So those skills are what we really look for in our employees to be able to bring them in and teach them the technology. But the thing that I think is most misunderstood about veterans is no one seems to look beyond the initial specialty. When you talk about an infantryman, you think about what Hollywood portrays them at Rambo and Willem Dafoe. But for that person to be able to do their job, there's all kinds of supporting skills that they need to do to maintain their equipment, their vehicle, their weapon systems, their communications. That sounds like a data center technician to me. We just need to teach them new equipment. We've proven that you can take cooks and truck drivers and teach them how to be data center technicians. And that skill set uh, is very misunderstood because you'll go to an employer typically and you tell them what you did in the military. First thing they'll do with an infantryman is put them in as a security guard and the cook will go into food service. They're missing an opportunity to have technicians and project managers with great skills. So you do you think there's some sort of misunderstanding on how transferable those skills are? Um, into our industry and even even if you do you even think there's some stigma um, around just employing veterans i think there is uh, for people that haven't been around the military community and they've only learned about the military through the movies and tv shows they see an entirely different impression of veterans than what is really there uh, one thing that i learned when i went through basic training was how to learn how to grow and do it quickly and i think that skill set is enormously important in a industry like ours that's changing at such a pace and growing at such a pace if you come in and want to just sit back and not learn anymore you're dead weight so the people in the military come and are lifelong learners you get them engaged and they'll continue they'll stay up with technology they'll stay up with the latest processes and be able to deliver the services hmm. i'm sure they're very good at sticking to deadlines as well which is very important yes <laughs> in our industry um but I mean, going back to going back to salutes uh, and talking about how how much you've grown over the years. Uh, I mean, you're five and a half years uh, from the beginning. You've grown three hundred percent still. So I mean, what's the secret to still grow so much um, after nearly half a decade? It's a combination of things. I think that the service model that we defined in the beginning has been embraced by the industry because. One, we had a personnel shortage, so we took advantage of that opportunity to bring a new resource pool to bear. We put in a comprehensive workforce development program that goes from training entry level all the way to intermediate and can take you, no matter what your skill set is, integrate you in, make you productive, and then give you a career path that you can continuously develop. With the service model that we've got, uh, the reason that it's so important is that the the military discipline that we apply to the sites and the data centers, we do across the board. So our service techs do both CE work, the critical environments, mechanical and electrical, they do the IT work and they do the security. And that cuts down on the number of people needed on site. It was a uh, happenstance based on COVID that cutting down on the number of people on site was actually a good thing. And now we've got a new operating model that people are embracing because it cuts down on their costs, but it cuts down on human risk during pandemics and things like that. So it's a better way of doing business. And I, I believe that's what's really contributed to our rapid growth. Definitely sounds like, but what's been one thing that you've learned over the years since you launched? Um, there's no account for planning, planning in advance. Everybody, there's an old saying, uh, any plan does not survive first contact, but without that plan, you're never gonna get to first contact. We continuously reassess and regage and make fine tunes to what we're doing, but we planned this out from the beginning to have that workforce development strategy in place that could tap into the supply chain, produce productive members uh, of this industry, and then to continually grow and having a good service model and starting with the end in mind of what we wanted to build has been the cornerstone to our success. And that planning, I think that people often try to shortcut, uh, you can't shortcut planning. Hmm. Okay, sounds good. And uh, one last question, if people want to learn more about salutes, if they want to get involved, so if they are veterans, or if they're operators, um, if they want to get involved, where can they go? How can they get in touch? What's the process? 
variety of ways. You can hit our website. You can follow our LinkedIn group. SaluteMissionCritical.com is out there. We've got an info at SaluteMissionCritical.com, and they can always reach out to me. I'm happy to talk to veterans, non-veterans, anybody that has a passion for this business because it's continuously growing, and they'll find out more about our programs like our military spouse program and the value of that demographic as well to be bringing into the industry. The more you dig, the more you find out and you may be able to apply what we've done to your business. And I'd be happy to share our workforce development model, how that works and how it could apply to your business, whether you're in this industry or the other, it's tapping into that valuable resource pool of veterans and turning them into great employees. Hmm. Okay. Um, I know I say it was the last question, but one final one. If you had to describe what you're doing for the industry, because um, I think you're going to be beyond just serving an industry, actually doing something quite unique for the industry. If I had to describe what you're doing in one word, uh, what word would you choose? Change. We're, we're changing things because everybody has complained about the personnel shortage for at least the last decade. Mm -hmm. We're showing a way that you can fix this. You can fix the personnel shortage and up the game with the quality of resources you bring to the table. Mm -hmm. Okay, Lee, thank you so much. Um, thank you. And thank you, our viewers as well at home, for tuning in to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts. Don't forget, you can also uh, follow our channels, social media channels, to find out more information about us and the industry. Um, until next time, happy networking. Mm -hmm.